In today's episode, let's talk a little bit more about EQ. And uh, that's a question that's come up quite a bit lately. So we're just gonna talk about the basics today. This is a tool, just like if you were doing a woodworking project, you'd have a series of tools that you would use to complete your project. And EQ is one of the tools you can use in audio for processing your sound. Just because the tool is available doesn't need to mean you need to use it every single time. <laughs> um, so I, I would not get yourself in the habit of using EQ to address ongoing production sound issues. So for example, if you have, you're finding something um, that, that you're running into an issue over time where you did the production sound, you did the recording, and um, I, I wouldn't use EQ as a way in post to address a consistent production issue. Just needed to say that because I think um, sometimes we get trapped in that kind of thinking. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, before I get started on this, let me just play it through really quickly. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, decent recording. I do have a little lip smack here. Um, I actually talked about this in another episode here. If I drag up, I'm in Adobe Audition CC. Um, we have the spectral view here of the sound. And there's a little bit of a lip smack right here. I wanna get rid of that. I would just highlight that. And on the PC, do Control U. And on the Mac, Command U. And it will actually take care of that for me very quickly and easily. That's nice. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna actually rely pretty heavily on this spectral view. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that we have a lot of energy down below 100 hertz, it will appear. And in fact, that's where some of the hiss and rumble are coming from as well. So one thing I will use EQ for is to actually roll off some of that energy. That's stuff that you can't, that, that in this particular case is a dialogue recording. None of that is the dialogue. That is uh, the room, <laughs> perhaps the microphone, it's other things, um, but it's not information that you need in your final piece. And it's not stuff that you can hear in the voice generally. So um, to a certain point, some men's voices may just creep down into the maybe the 70 hertz range at the, at the most. Um, but a lot of that, anything below that, we really, really don't need. And in fact, what it can do, and the reason it can become problematic is that when your audience goes to play back, um, their speaker system can start to struggle if it has to play back that low frequency energy that they don't really need anyway that can start to interfere with the dialogue itself. So it's always, um, not always, but oftentimes a good idea to apply that. You'll notice on a lot of production equipment, recorders, microphones, you'll often have a high pass filter to take care of that while you're recording. But if that wasn't done, you can always do it here in post. So I'll come up to effects, go to filter and EQ, and we're gonna use the parametric equalizer today. Now to do this, here's a high pass filter right here. Just click that on. And you can see I've dropped it all the way down to 40 Hertz. Actually, that's the default. We might pre creep that up a little bit, maybe go into the right around 70 hertz range. You can change the steepness of the curve, how much it rolls off. And actually, before I get into this, I should explain some things about EQ in particular. So um, the way what's represented here on the graph is on the left-hand side, we have the low frequency sounds, the bass sounds. On the right-hand side, we have the high frequency sounds, the treble sounds. And... Um, what the line represents is how you're affecting each of those frequencies in between the lowest and the highest. So you can actually boost certain frequencies if you want to, or you can cut them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get that back to its default here. Now, the high pass filter is a certain kind of equalizing effect, really. And what we're doing here is we're going to cut anything, any frequencies below 70 hertz. Um, we're going to drop about 24 decibels per octave. That's, I don't, don't worry too much about what that means, but you can see you can make it less steep if you want to. And in fact, that's generally probably a good idea. Maybe minus 12 will be about where we'll go. Let's go ahead and apply that and see what happens to the spectral view here. Not much. <laughs> spectral view is actually difficult for us to see down at that light. It did, did cut into it a little bit. It did remove some of this, the yellow energy here means there's a lot more energy and you can see it actually turned red here so we rolled some of that off so that's going to make it a little easier on our playback system so that's one thing that i use equalizing for as a high pass filter now there are a variety of other things you can do as well of course and this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting so let's go ahead and we're gonna we're done with that high pass filter 
One thing I have, the, the kind of a question I get about EQ a lot is, how do I sweeten dialogue to make it sound better? Well, why don't you just come into the vocal enhancer, which is just a preset, and it applies something like this. Now, this is a pretty extreme preset. Let's, uh, let's play through this here for you with it off the first time, and then we'll play through it again with it on. This is first of all with it off. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, and here it is with it on. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, now the question that may come up is, well, what's better? Well, this is where things start to get a little bit more subjective. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. This is a pretty extreme use of equalization, in my opinion. Um, for example, here you can see that this particular point up here at 17,458 hertz is boosted by 13.9 decibels. That's a lot. And I typically wouldn't do something that extreme. I would maybe, you know, pull it down maybe more into the three decibel range. We really don't need to bump it up quite that much. Some people go a little more crazy. It's all a matter of personal style, your choice. Um, but I generally wouldn't boost it quite that much. Let's try it again. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay. Um, now, we have a couple other things going on here that are applied. We also have a high-pass filter. We probably don't need that since we already did that. Actually, no, we probably do, and I'll explain why. We have this low-frequency um, shelf here, so we're actually boosting up the bass by six decibels. That's also, that's also quite a lot. Now, there are a variety of ways you could do this. Instead of doing it there, you could come in here and we're just going to move this to about 120 hertz, somewhere around there. There's 118. We might boost it. See how it's, this is a little different. This is more like a bell curve, whereas this low frequency one is a shelf. It pulls everything up in the low frequencies by the, by the same amount. So there are different ways you can do it, accomplish the same thing. Um, if you do apply it with a low shelf like this, that's why they applied the high pass filter to roll it back off once you got to the lower frequencies. So this is going to add a, an element of richness to most voices. <laughs> Again, if I turn this off and play it for you, here's the original recording. This is a sample audio clip that we'll... And here it is with the EQ turned on. We'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. You can hear there's an additional bass in, um, sort of emphasis, and it sounds richer. It sounds very much, to me, like an FM radio announcer that you would... Um, that that kind of really warm, rich kind of sound. That works in certain pieces and it doesn't work in other pieces. So I certainly would say, this is again where I would say, don't apply this all the time. <laughs> it's not something you always need to apply. Now, there's also something else going on here. We also have this, this little dip that they um, pulled out here right around 300 hertz. They have it set to 291 hertz. Um, let's see if we can hear the difference with it off and then on. So here it is with it off. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, let's turn it back on. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. I think what this one does here, um, and it may be difficult to hear, but what it is, I think, doing is that there's a, at 300 hertz, roughly, you will start to get a little bit of muddiness, especially if you start to add bass. And uh, what that does is that keeps that muddiness from building up. What happens if you add too much bass, uh, at cer a certain point, a voice becomes difficult to hear, becomes fatiguing for the audience to listen to that with a whole bunch of bass. So you got to be kind of careful about that. You don't want to go too crazy. I would say, again, for this vocal enhancer preset, just if you want to do something like this, I would use that as a starting point, And then I would kind of tweak it to fulfill your needs. So, I don't think we really need to add that much bass in this particular case. And what I would typically do is if you're going to make a change, do it in three decibel increments. That's usually something your ear can hear, um, but it's not so extreme. And if you find, for example, you add three decibels of bass at 110 hertz and it doesn't feel like it's quite enough, then bump it up another three dB, go to six dB, but do it in increments. Um, and then another thing to consider is if you are going to apply it um, you, what you can do in addition is you can kind of go, you know, kind of keep incrementing it until you get to a point where you're like, oh, okay, now I can hear it. 
then you might don't want to just pull it back just a little bit. Again, with audio, typically, for dialogue, you're typically not trying to... You, you want it to sound nice, of course, but you don't want to go so extreme that your audience is getting distracted by the voice. So you want to keep it within the realm of reality for just normal dialogue. Now, if you're going for an effect, that's a different thing altogether. But if you're not going for an effect, um, and say, for example, it's an interview, you want the person to sound present, you want it to sound nice, but you don't want it to sound like, um, you know, some super duper voiceover, um, like a commercial type thing where they're right up on the microphone and you get this really super kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it type of voice. So <laughs> that, that's some just some, some thoughts there. Now, another thing, I'm going to go back to the default here. We're going to we're not going to apply that. Um, another thing you can do too, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, is you can use EQ to kind of remove harshness from voices. So, so specifically from recordings, I would say actually. So here, for example, if we take one of these and we boost it up, one thing you can do is actually boost pretty extremely. And then as you're playing back the audio, sweep it back and forth. That may help you identify where you want to add a little bit more energy or reduce that energy. And in fact, this, this technique here of sweeping can be really helpful. And, and typically what I will do is, well, there are kind of two different approaches. So here, let's go ahead and play through as I sweep this around and you can hear what it sounds like. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll Okay, so what I might do here is I might actually use this boost here to identify potentially problematic frequencies that I may want to remove. And when I sweep it back and forth and I find a frequency where it starts to sound really harsh or unpleasant where I've boosted it, that may be a sign that I may actually want to cut at that frequency. So let's play this back now. We'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, that's with it on, here's with it off. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ. Yeah, that's something you could potentially do there. I'd probably not go so extreme, but if you're finding you have a lot of mid-range kind of harshness, this can be uh, you know something that you can do. Go ahead and create that bell make it, you know, pretty prominent, sweep back and forth until you find it where it sounds really kind of harsh. And then you can just do a pretty sort of mild cut there just to kind of make the voice mellow out just a little bit. So that can be a pretty common one as well. I do find, for example, a lot of lavalier microphones, it seems tend to be pretty hyped somewhere around one kilohertz or 1000 hertz. And so doing this sort of sweep there again, boosting and sweeping back and forth until you hear that really kind of harsh sound and then doing a little bit of a cut really kind of can do a lot to really mellow the sound out for that particular dialogue. So that's another thing you can do. You can also, another approach people take sometimes is they do kind of a really significant cut and they play through it and sweep that back and forth to see how that affects things. Do to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change. Okay, so you get the idea there. So those are sort of the basics of using equalization. Now, there are different types of equalizers. What we're looking at here is called a parametric equalizer. What the parametric refers to is you have all these different pr parameters. You can actually turn each of them on or off independently and apply them each independently, a different set of parameters. Now, there are also what are called graphic equalizers. They're a little more old school, um, and they're I think they're di more difficult to work with personally, but this is the like back in the days of boom boxes and hi-fi systems where you had a graphic equalizer, this may look familiar to you. The problem with these in the most cases is that they're sort of um, tied to specific frequencies. You don't get as much freedom to change things. Um, 
but uh, they can be useful as well. That's why I just just so you're aware that that exists out there. <laughs> but generally, I find parametric equalizers to be more useful in the type of work that we're doing here. And another thing that we haven't talked about yet, which we should go ahead and cover now at this point, is not only can you affect how much you boost or cut a particular frequency, but you can also modify the Q or the width. So I can actually make it narrower if I want to get a little bit more clinical and precise, or I can make it wider if I want it to apply to more of the overall frequencies, make it sound a little bit more perhaps natural or, um, well, I don't know if natural is the right term depending on what, what kind of a boost or a cut you're doing. Um, but those can be helpful there. Now, again, if you're just trying to clean up uh, some dialogue and make it sound sound nice without sounding stylized, um, what I would probably recommend is you're mostly going to want to do cuts versus boosts. So in most cases, doing a cut is going to get you a lot farther along than doing boosts. Boosts are dangerous. Um, <laughs> So I would say be careful with boosting. Um, in this particular preset, again, this is an extreme preset in, in my opinion, but they're doing a six decibel boost of the bass here. They are doing a minus three decibel cut at about 300 hertz to kind of get rid of that muddiness. And then also adding this high frequency shelf, adding 13.9 decibels, wow. <laughs> if you have a really dry mic that, that can, or a really dry recording, that can be fine. But again, in kind of, for my purposes, I would generally pull that back down to somewhere around three. Um, I would decide whether or not I really need to do this cut right here. Again, if you have a really good production audio, you may not need to do that. And then I would probably pull this down and not go quite so extreme. So let's just go ahead and review that here. First of all is without the EQ. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. This is a sample audio clip that we'll use to demonstrate how to use EQ to change the sound. Okay, so there's an overall demonstration of EQ, how it works, uh, some ideas on when you might want to use it. Now, one thing we haven't covered here that was a question last week was, hey, how do I get one clip that was recorded in one room to sound like another clip that was recorded in a different room? The, the short answer is you would use EQ to do that. That would be kind of one of the main tools you would use. It's not super easy, but <laughs> the, what I would do is load both clips into Audition here. I would be able to go, so you could switch back and forth between them, and you could use EQ to um, help you kind of sculpt one of them or both of them to sound more similar. Now, one of the things you can do too is as you switch back and forth between them using the spectral view, if you don't know how to get to that, there's a little thing you can grab down here at the bottom of the window when you start in waveform view, which is the green here. You just drag that up. That is the spectral view. And what you might want to do is compare how the two different audio clips look in the spectral view. And what you're looking for is you can see in this particular case, there's a lot of bass down here up through about, I would say 600 Hertz or so. A lot of that yellow, that's the hottest stuff. There also appears to be another kind of presence peak, if you will, or, the, you know, well, not presence peak, but there tends to be a, a fair bit of energy up here as well, which is in the 6.4 kilohertz range and around it. So you would look to see between the two clips, you know, are we seeing some significant differences in terms of where most of the energy is falling? So that would be one thing that would help you to make some decisions. So for example, if you're finding that one clip doesn't have nearly as much energy down here as the other, that means you might want to do a boost on the one that doesn't have quite so much energy down here, or perhaps do a cut on the one that does have a lot of energy down here. Again, trying to get them a little bit closer to how they sound so it's not so jarring to switch back and forth between them. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave those down below and we'll go ahead and do our best to, to try and address those. And we will talk to you again next week. Happy recording.